Hi, I am Hannah Lin, a regional fellow at New York Presbyterian Hospital Weill Cornell. I am honored to share our abstract for Bessel meeting at ASRA 2020. Our study is to define the dose response relationship of local anesthetic volume and diaphragmatic paresis following ultrasound guided supraclavicular block. To answer this question, we conducted an observer blinded prospective trial using up down methodology which limits the number of patients exposed to sub-anesthetic volumes of local anesthetic. Our primary objective was to define the dose response curve. Our secondary objectives were to assess respiratory function via negative inspiratory force and oxygen saturation, which are easy to perform at bedside, as well as to assess the extent of sensory and motor blockades. We recruited adult patients ASA 1 through 3 who underwent right upper extremity surgery with supraclavicular block as the primary anesthetic. Patients with respiratory disease were excluded. We started the trial with a cohort of three patients who all received an initial dose of 35 cc of 2 to 1 mixture of mepivacaine 1.5% and bupivacaine 0.5%. We conducted bedside and mode ultrasound tracings of the right diaphragm while the patient performed voluntary sniffs in a supine position at time 0, 15, and 30 minutes post-block. Hemidiaphragmatic paresis was defined as greater than or equal to 60% reduction in diaphragmatic excursion, no movement or paradoxical movement when compared to baseline. The trial was stopped when any of the three stopping criteria was met which for us was de-escalation to the lowest dose of 5 cc's and finding at least one patient with paresis in that cohort. Seen on this slide is a bedside NIF meter we used to measure NIF at baseline and 30 minutes post-block. We also assessed motor and sensory functions at 15 and 30 minutes post-block with a maximum combined block score of 20, indicating complete blockade. Any score less than 10 was deemed ineffective, and upon completion of all post-block evaluations, Supplementary dosing of local anesthetic was added for surgery. We recruited 24 subjects, of which three were excluded for baseline abnormal diaphragmatic motion, which resulted in a total of 21 patients in our trial. Hemidiaphragmatic paresis was found at all levels. 14 patients exhibited paresis. These patients had statistically significant decrease in NIF and in oxygen saturation at 30 minutes post-block but none required respiratory intervention. Three patients had ineffective surgical blocks, two at 15 cc's and one at five cc's of local anesthetic. This slide shows our results. Figure one shows our dose response curve, which indicate that there's a 100% probability of paresis at 30 and 35 cc dose levels. Even at the five cc dose level, the probability of paresis is over 30%. Figure 2 shows our up and down methodology, indicating that hemidiaphragmatic paresis is seen at all dose levels. Figure 3 shows our M-mode ultrasound tracings during voluntary sniff at 30 minutes post-block. Paresis was determined via amplitude of excursion, which was measured from baseline to the point of maximum height of inspiration. Picture 1 indicates normal diaphragmatic excursion, while picture 2 and 3 show diaphragmatic paresis with flat or paradoxical tracings. To discuss, hemidiaphragmatic paresis was present at all dose levels, suggesting no clinically relevant dose at which paresis could be avoided. Literature demonstrates variable incidences of paresis at various concentrations and doses of local anesthetic, but this study is the first of its kind to define a dose response curve between local anesthetic volume and diaphragmatic paresis. Our use of up-down methodology minimizes patient exposure to sub-anesthetic volumes of local anesthetic. Strength of our trial include using observer-blinded prospective trial, the use of up-down methodology as stated earlier, as well as the use of safe, reliable, and quick bedside modalities like the M-mode ultrasonography and the NIF meter. Limitations include a small trial size of 21 patients, mainly all female, but again, this should not matter because the patients were compared against themselves. This trial is limited to one institution and to healthy patients. To conclude, our study defined a dose response curve for hemidiaphragmatic paresis after supraclavicular block and emphasized that there is likely no clinically relevant dose, even at 5 cc's, at which paresis can be avoided. Thank you for taking the time to watch our video, and we look forward to discussing this more.